Continue our journey in Asia. We came to the winter wonderland in Hokkaido. It's the second largest, northernmost, and least developed of Japan's four main islands. Known for its harsh winter with lots of snowfall, below zero temperatures, and frozen seas. For us, it was one of the toughest and most challenging filming and traveling experiences. But the unspoiled nature, landscape, wildlife, culture, and cuisine make this island our favorite winter destination by far. We landed in Sapporo, the capital of Hokkaido, just in time when all the neon lights on the street got turned on. Our first stop was to join the locals for an authentic and traditional Japanese robata yaki dinner. Robata refers to a cooking method similar to barbecue, as the food is cooked over hot charcoal. We had plenty of dishes of local seafood and fish rolls, and were fully energized in a cold and chilly night. After a few hours of sleep, we came to the iconic Hokkaido Shrine in the morning. We followed traditions to wash our hands and mouth before entering the shrine. The historical building was established in 1871, and it looked extra poetic in the snow. We made a wish and asked for prayers for good luck towards our journey this time so we could let the adventure in Hokkaido begin. Later on, we came to visit the Yoichi distillery of Nika whiskey. As the climate and natural features of Hokkaido are similar to Scotland, Masataka Takashiro, the first Japanese who mastered in whiskey making in Scotland, set up this distillery here in 1934. The traditional coal-fired distillation we saw is hardly seen today. However, it creates a unique characteristic of Yuichi single malt with boldness and toasty burnt flavors. Mmm, it was just perfect having a sip of fine whiskey on a cold snow day. If you love seafood, you cannot miss Kushiro Washo Market for the best seafood experience. We could not decide where to start, so we began with the king crab, the biggest one in the market of course, ready to be served in 30 minutes. There was also the famous kate dome, which you start with a bowl of rice and choose the seafood as your toppings. How incredible and satisfying is that? After leaving our autographs and the city life behind, we're headed to the ski town Niseko. We're known for its quality powder snow and onsen hot spring resorts. We started a relaxing morning in our luxury loft in Shiboku, appreciating the cozy living area in our home away from home and the stunning view of Mount Yote. Soon enough, we put on our ski outfits, ready to step out our comfort zone for the snow mountains. There are six major ski areas in Niseko. We joined other skis and snowboard lovers for the lift ride heading to the top. It was actually my third time skiing, but we had a wonderful coach, Dan, from Niseko Wa. So let's see how it goes. Oops, I guess I still need a lot of lessons. Maybe they'll just watch and appreciate how other experts are doing it. Finally, we finished the rough day on the slope and came back in town for the nutritious crab hot pot dinner to recoup some energy and then soak up in the private onsen in our loft for a retreat. Follow the marshmallow-like stream valley, 
we moved to the frozen lake Shikari Betsu, waking up in a traditional Japanese home with tatami floor and futon setting. Enjoy our Japanese rice ball and tea for breakfast. We love the Papa Ice Village on the frozen lake, along with the lakeside resorts. Makes you feel like you're in a different part of planet. Then we order some whiskey in the rock to warm up ourselves and host our own party in the spectacular ice bar. Lastly, a bath in outdoor hot spring was much needed with minus 15 degrees temperature. Through the snow mountains and forests, we came to the crater lake of Lake Akan during the blizzard. As the lake is frozen and covered in the heavy snow, we hide it in this little colorful tent for ice fishing. By the time our patient ran out, we went for something more exciting with the snowmobile. And after a speedy moment, we explored the charming village in Ainu Kotan, a local indigenous tribe and its handicrafts. As the evening arrived, we step off from our husband resort and follow the rhythm to the traditional performance at Lei Akan Ainu Theater. The ancient ceremonial dances capture a lot of local essence and elements from wildlife, beliefs, and lifestyle. The signature hair dance by female dancers was surely one of the highlights. It was truly a delightful evening dancing together with the Kotan residents. In central and east Hokkaido, you could experience the pure wilderness and simplest Japanese village living. We spend the day with a rain crown crane at Rui Ito Tancho Crane Sanctuary. The Japanese crane is known as a symbol of luck and longevity, but received endangered status since 1970. Thanks to the conservation program, we could still observe their movement and behavior up close. At a deserted Mount Low, a volcano that was once a sulfur mine, the Bear Mountain is alive with hot steam coming out from the fumarole. You can smell the strong sulfur and feel the heat and power from the earth. Right before sunset, we stop at Shunayu Onsen by Lake Kusharu. We're accompanied by hundreds of swans while enjoying the naturally heated sand and hot spring on the beach. It was like a scene coming up on the fairy tale. On our last day in Hokkaido, we jump on the cruise Aurora to chase the drift ice in Abashiri area. It was the coldest day with minus 25 degrees outside, but we decided to stay on the deck to enjoy the incredible view. Everything we saw was beyond grand, pristine, and breathtaking. An experience like this may be something that only happens once in your lifetime. There was nothing else we could expect as a better ending for this trip. Finally, we surpassed the horizon and continue our journey to the next destination. Thank you very much for watching. If you like our journey and my inspired project, please don't forget to hit the button and subscribe to our channel.